Hello, my name is Elaine, and I want to welcome you to my Advanced Unison League Lancer's Guide. When last we spoke about the Lancer class, I explained the class's basic build, gave you some ability set suggestions for the first three rings, and some other helpful tips for beginners. Today, I'm going to pick up right where I left off and give you guys some advice for the class's latter three rings using the same format as the beginner's video, suggesting ability sets for every situation you might find yourselves in. Now let's jump into it. Please note that these are just suggestions, and other sets may work better for you depending on your needs and those of your allies. The weapons you equip may also grant boosts and bonuses to certain moves, making them a better choice for you, so please keep this in mind. Last time, in our Unison League discussion, we ended with the Dragoon, Third Ring. For PvE, I suggested Ether Exchange, Sting, Savage Sting, and Soul of the Wolf. For PvP, I suggested the same as PvE with a potential cheer swap. For Kahlo, I kept everything the same, but guard in place of EE. Okay, for Cyril now, the Ladder Lancer Rings. The Arch Dragoon, Fourth Ring. For PvE or things like normal quests, we're going to drop everything but Ether Exchange like a hot potato. The first new ability we are going to add is Break Thrust, which has a lower cooldown of 8 seconds and lower median end cost of 12. It has an ability power of 140 and damages one enemy with physical damage that ignores damage reduction and damage reflection. Its added effect is that it increases the target's break value by 10. I like this ability for several reasons. First, it has a lower cost and cooldown. Second, it has a solid AP of 140. Third, it ignores damage reduction and reflection, helping you to dish out the most damage and keep from being hurt in the process. It also increases the target's break value, making it easier for you and your teammates to deal critical damage. Next, I would bring Double Sting, which has a lower cooldown of 8 seconds and median higher cost of 16. It has an ability power of 100 and deals physical damage to one enemy two times. Its added effect is that it increases the target's break value by 30. It has a combo effect. When used after Savage Sting, it deals physical damage with an ability power of 110, a 10 point increase over the non combo version, two times. It also increases the break value added effect by 40, making the target's break value 70. This doesn't matter though, since you don't have Savage Sting equipped. Even though this ability has a lower AP than the earlier abilities in the Sting line, I like it for a few reasons. First, it hits its target twice as opposed to once, allowing you to deal a good amount of damage, especially when boosted by monster effects or other abilities. Furthermore, it increases the target's break value to a higher degree than the other abilities in the line, making it more likely that you and your team will do critical amounts of damage. Then, I would bring Dragon Crush, which has a low cooldown of 4 seconds and high cost of 20. It has an ability power of 250 and deals physical damage to one enemy. It has an added effect. Its ability power is boosted by 50 when the target is broken, making it a whopping 300 AP when this criteria is met. This ability is great. It has a low cooldown and massive HP, which allows you to do a massive amount of damage, especially when your target is broken, which is fairly likely given your set. The only downside is its high cost, which can be an issue for newer players who struggle with cost management. Finally, bring an attack replacement ability if you have one. This should be the case across the board. Drop attack like a hot potato as soon as you're able. For PvP, so things like guild battles, bring the same as PvE with a potential cheer swap. For Kahlo, guard in place of EE. You start with enough cost, you won't need it. Then bring the rest of your PvE set. Now on to the Executioner of the 5th Ring. This is where things start to get tough. There are a lot of good abilities to play around with now and several really good sets, but I liked using the following as an Executioner. For PvE, keep Ether Exchange, Dragon Crush, and Break Thrust. You're keeping Dragon Crush because of its massive damage output and Break Thrust because it ignores damage reduction and reflection. Then swap Double Sting out for Severe Sting, which has a low cooldown of 6 seconds and median lower cost of 12. It has an ability power of 170 and deals physical damage to one enemy. It has an added effect. It increases the target's break value by 40. Its ability power is boosted by 50 when the target is broken. I like this ability for several reasons. First, it has a low cooldown and fairly low cost. Second, it increases the target's break value, making it more likely that you and your teammates will inflict critical damage. The break will also increase Dragon Crush's AP as well as its own AP. This will let you inflict even more damage. Finally, it starts off with a solid ability power, so even if it isn't boosted by a target's broken status, you're bound to dish out a ton of damage. For PvP, bring the same with a potential cheer swap. You also may want to consider swapping an ability with negative pressure, which has a long cooldown of 40 seconds and median cost of 15. It decreases the unison gauge of one enemy and their adjacent enemies, with a max of three enemies by 10. This ability's major downside is its cooldown, but it's great in PvP situations, especially when the other players are inactive or on auto, since it's more likely to hit them in one of these situations. It's great because if it hits, it will prevent the enemy from using their monsters in unison, making it more likely your team will be able to win a unison battle and wipe them out, rinsing and repeating until you win the war. For Kahlo, bring guard in place of EE. Negative pressure would also be something to consider here. Now for the Val Dragoon, the sixth ring. You now have access to all of your abilities outside those you earn in the Tower of Judgment if you have yet to complete it. And there are tons of good ones. I feel as though you can't really go wrong here, so I'm just going to share what I roll with when I play this class. For PvE, keep EE, then take Dragon Ripper, which has a low cooldown of 5 seconds and median cost of 14. It has an ability power of 100 and deals physical damage to a single enemy 3 times. Its ability power is boosted by 50 for each critical hit. Its added effect is that it paralyzes a target for 30 seconds with a success value of 70. It has a combo effect. 
When used after stake all, it deals physical damage three times with an ability power of 120, a 20 point increase over the non-combo version. Its ability power is boosted by 50 for each critical hit. Its added effect is that it reduces the target's physical defense by 30% for 10 seconds. I like this ability because it hits your target multiple times. Also, its power can be magnified for each critical hit you land, making it an extremely powerful ability when it comes to dishing out damage. I also like that it can paralyze the target, for although this can be cleared with various cleric abilities for example, it has the chance to keep your enemies from hitting you until a time in which you have knocked them out. The combo added effect isn't bad either, since it should help increase your damage output further. Then bring Volcanic Nova, which has a low cooldown of 7 seconds and medium cost of 18. It is usable when a lance is equipped as your main weapon. It targets one enemy with an ability power of 80 and deals physical damage 4 times. Its added effect is that its ability power is boosted by 50 after each hit when the target is broken. It has a combo effect. When used after quick raid, it deals physical damage 4 times with an ability power of 100. Its added effect is that it increases the target's break value by 40. Although this one has a low AP, it hits multiple times, which I really like. Its power is also boosted when the target is broken, allowing you to do even more damage. Finally, I like to carry Dragon Crush and do all that damage. For PvP, bring the same as your PvE set with potential cheer and negative pressure swap. I would also consider bringing attack abilities that bypass damage reduction and reflection to help you maximize damage output, especially against an enemy crystal with its pesky mirrors. For example, I like to bring Riot Break, which has a low cooldown of 6 seconds and low cost of 10. It has an ability power of 150 and deals physical damage that penetrates damage reduction and reflection effects with a success value of 80 to a single enemy 1-3 to three times. Its added effect is that it reduces the unison gauge gains of the target by 1 for 20 seconds. I like this one because it hits multiple times, has a low cost and cooldown, has a good chance of bypassing damage reduction and reflection, and because it reduces the target's unison gauge gains, making it harder for them to gain uni and use a monster to defeat you. For Kahlo, bring guard in place of EE and consider negative pressure as well. And that concludes my advanced Unison League Lancers guide. I hope you found my guide helpful and feel better prepared to play Unison League. I wish you all the best of luck and thank you for watching. If you liked what you saw, please smash that like button until it's blue, subscribe and hit that bell so you'll know what's up, and leave a comment if you have any questions. I'm always happy to help and would be adding more Unison League class guides over time to continue to expand your breadth of knowledge. Happy gaming, I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Bye guys!